So we've just seen on the previous page how one element can come in a few different forms. The fancier scientific word for one of those forms of an atom is the word isotope. So we have three different isotopes of carbon. One that has a mass number of 12, one that has a mass of 13, and one that has a mass of 14. They're all atoms of carbon because they have six protons and that's what makes carbon carbon is the six protons. But when the neutron number varies, causing a variation in the mass number, it's a different type of carbon. So just to reiterate, an isotope is just a fancy way of saying a form of an element. It's saying, which type do you have? Which type is it? Because if there's multiple kinds, you need to know which kind you're talking about. If you have two atoms and those two atoms have the same number of protons, but varying numbers of neutrons, then we could say that they are isotopes of each other, that they are all variations of the same element, same number of protons, but varying number of neutrons. Now, one thing I wanted to emphasize is that every single atom on the planet is an isotope. It's just that some isotopes are more common and some are more rare. There's somewhere along the way in a lot of students' science upbringing before they get to chemistry, I, I don't know what happens there. There's a little bit of a disconnect in this vocabulary. There's a lot of students that incorrectly think that there's something like the regular form of an atom and that the word isotopes only refers to the rare form of an element, but that's not the case. Every single atom in the world is an isotope it's either a common isotope or a rare isotope. So how did the, the fact that isotopes exist, how does that help explain the numbers you see at the bottom of the boxes on the periodic table? So if I scroll back here, when we look at our sample uh, periodic table square, what's the deal with this number? What's going on here? And what do isotopes have to do with that bottom number? Well, that bottom number, what that number represents, it's a weighted average atomic mass of all the isotopes of that element. It's a weighted average. What that means is it's kind of like your chemistry grade, how your chemistry grade is 90% uh, assessments and 10% other, um, that your assessment grades are worth more in the end than your lab notebook grades or something like that. That it skews the average in favor of the more important category. Well, when we look at that, um, that there are three different types of carbon, carbon with a mass of 12, carbon with a mass of 13, and carbon with a mass of 14. And then we look at the information on the periodic table there, that carbon has a weighted average atomic mass of 12.011. What that tells me is that there must be a lot of carbon-12 atoms out there in the world because the weighted average is skewed to be really close to 12. And there's just a little bit of carbon-13 and carbon-14 out there in the world that brings up that weighted average just a hair. And so it's skewed in favor of the most abundant isotope.
the one that shows up in nature more frequently. So just another uh, example of what isotopes are all about and weighted averages and how do they do that. So just to kind of put it in terms of food, uh, what if you had Skittles, plain M&Ms, peanut M&Ms, and sweet tarts? All of those are forms of the element candium, right? They're all types of candy. Um, and so we would say that they're all isotopes of the fake element candium. But the masses of each type of candy are a little bit different, right? Like a peanut M&M weighs a little bit more than a plain M&M does. As a result, when you get, if you had a periodic table square for candium, it depends on your sample of candy, of what number goes at the bottom of that square. Does your bag of candy, is it mostly made up of peanut M&Ms? Or is it mostly made up of sweet tarts? you know, which candy is the most prevalent, and then we would skew that weighted average in whatever form of candy, whatever isotope of candy, is the most abundant. So, can you use that average atomic mass number on the periodic table to determine the number of neutrons an atom has? Why or why not? No. You can't. There's no atom that exists with that mass on the entire planet, even in outer space. There is not a single atom of carbon anywhere in the world that has a mass of 12.011. It doesn't exist. That number is just an average of all the isotopes of carbon. So just to give you another analogy, let's say you took two tests in chemistry and you got an 80% on the first one, and then you studied a little bit harder for test number two, you got a 100%. If I said to you, what's your test average in chemistry? Your average is a 90. Well, you never got a 90 on a test, right? In the same way, there isn't a single atom of carbon out there that has a mass of 12.011. There's carbon atoms that have a mass of 12 or 13 or 14, but there is no atom of carbon with a mass of 12.011. So why do we even put that number there? Well, we're going to need that number, but not in the chapter that we are currently working on, not on today's notes. We don't need that information just yet. The only thing you'd need off your periodic table for today is that atomic number only.